Your Word for Today with Pastor Billy Burke. Great to have you today on Your Word for Today. Boy, I believe the Holy Spirit has a powerful word for you today. And that word is taking a step of faith in your storm. Let's go read about it. Matthew chapter 14, verse 24 says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. Notice that phrase, tossed with the waves. For the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. So as Jesus is walking on the sea, he's not walking on a calm, glassy sea. He's walking on a very boisterous, wave-ridden sea. Very, you know, very... Uh, Nothing peaceful about it. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. They said, it's a spirit, and they cried out with fear. But straight away Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be, if it be thou, bid me to come unto you on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he was walking on the water to go to Jesus. You know, it's interesting that this story, was, had the Spirit quickened to share with you today, that a lot of the times that God's requiring us to move in faith, the circumstances are far from peaceful. It's far from what you feel like doing. And on this night, because when you get into the sea, it's a different sea at nighttime than it is in the daytime. And it's a different sea whenever it's pretty and it's blue and you can see the water. At nighttime, the sea can be another picture altogether. This was darkest before dawn. This was in the fourth watch of the night. So putting these circumstances together, waves chopping all over the place against the fisherman's boat, not some big ocean liner, so this water was pounding into the, into the very place where they were sitting and standing. It was very, very dark. Here comes Jesus walking on the water. And Peter is so captured by this supernatural event that Jesus was walking on top of the water. And Peter was attracted as much as anybody ever could be on when the laws of physiology are broken when natural laws are broken. He was captured by the supernatural. Aren't we all, once we accept Jesus, once we get born again, once the, we're, we're engulfed by the Holy Spirit, aren't we really, doesn't, isn't there, should be an appetite in us to transcend, at times, at least, at, at least part-time, to transcend natural law. And that's all Peter wanted. He said, man, look at this. And he wanted to go to Jesus in that moment. Not when the circumstances were better. Not when the sea was calm. Not when the sun was shining and the beach was full. No, right before dawn cracked open the sun. Right when it was so dark. Right whenever it was chilling. Right whenever it was like, this could be a scary moment. Peter says, I want to take a step in the storm. I want to take a step in the storm. You know, it affects all of us differently, you know, and it, what the Holy Spirit's trying to do in this hour, because there's such uncertainty out there. I mean, the devil is just pulling, you know, all kinds of stuff out of his deep, dark, wicked hat, and we have to be able to take steps of faith, irregardless of what it seems like, feels like, looks like, what we hear. We've got to be able to not be shut down or shut out or placed out of order because something looks so bad. You see, it, it, when circumstances hit, and, it's, and if it's something that is pretty, pretty rough, and we know some of those situations come to all of us, it rains on the just and the unjust. Isn't that true? It rains on the just and the unjust right here. And they can affect people in so many different ways. A lot of people just shut down. A lot of people just give in to anger. They're just so angry that this is taking place. Angry that a diagnosis came up of cancer. Angry that, you know, 
their car broke down alongside the road and, you know, and now they have to get extra work done on the car. Angry, angry, and angry. There's a lot of people just angry. They can't get into faith because they're so angry. Or at least they can get into faith, but they feel like they can't get in there because they're consumed by the fact they can't believe this just happened that that phone call just came, that that bill just came, that the doctor just said, that their daughter just told them. On and on and on, and you hear it. And well, deep down inside, you know Jesus is Lord. Deep down inside, you know God has an answer. But at the moment, and that's when it really matters the most, is at the moment. We eventually catch up to what we need to do. But if we can just dial that back in, if we can just get refined just a little bit, we may be able to knock the devil out sooner. We may be able to get a Holy Ghost conclusion quicker, you know, more, more, um, more accelerated version of what God wants to do. I just don't think a lot of times that God wants us remaining in some of the situations we're in as long as we are. But like it or not, what happens is, you know, your emotions get involved. And like I said, you get angry, or you get afraid, or you get ashamed, or you just get into, uh, you, go, you get into depression. You know, I mean, you go inward. Instead of going upward, you go inward. Remember when Mary was standing at the cross with John, Jesus had to say to his own mother, Mother, behold your son. Why? Because she wasn't looking up at him. She was looking at her loss. She was looking into herself. So he had to tell her, Mom, keep your eyes on me. Look at me. And so a lot of times our attention, our focus, gets sidetracked. And like I said, we get into anger. We get into depression. We get into shame. We get into um, indifference. Like, I don't know what's going on. God's going to have to do it. God's going to have to work this out. And somehow we think that that's just acceptable. And what happens is, is that without even realizing, or maybe we're just physically tired. And there's always going to be somebody that's going to be on your side and say, take it easy, God loves you. All of that is true. We know that to be true. But don't you want to get your faith refined? Don't you want to live beyond what you've ever lived before? Don't you want to change some things to really show that you have grown in the Lord, that you've grown in faith, that you've grown, you know, in your ability to reach out to Him irregardless. Because all these Bible stories that we read, I mean, from Daniel in the den to Jonah in the fish, Paul and Silas in the prison, John on the island of Patmos, all of these stories, we, we sure enjoy reading them. And we love to see our, our heroes of faith in impossible situations. But God lets you spectate so you can imitate. Look at this. He wants you to spectate so you can imitate. The whole reason we, we read these stories isn't just to memorize these events and, and know where it's at. Oh, I can find it in my Bible or I can find it on my computer, on my iPhone. That's good. What God's goal is, is that we read these stories and we can take revelation out of that and say, wow, I want to pray like Daniel did, not after he got out, while he was in it. They praised while they were in it. They released faith in the middle of a time when so many people just shut down. They just shut down. Now, hey, it is a growth thing. You know, it is a progressive evolving. But God is saying in this hour, we're watching the world ramp up evil. We're watching the devil turn loose one virus after another. We're watching political agenda become center stage. You know, and, and just like Joshua of old, when the captain of the host stood in his way, Joshua said, are you for me or are you against me? And the angel said, I'm from the captain of the host. And then Joshua, knew, okay, you're for me. But just like Joshua, it's hard to tell anymore, even in our professional services, our three-letter agencies, who's for me and who's against me. Let me help you with that today. God is always for you. God is for you in a big, big way. 
He's for you to be found, to be discovered, to be strengthened, to be healed, for years to be restored. But that's going to require something on your part. And that is we can't wait till everything gets favorable. What's Ecclesiastes chapter 11 say? If you wait for no rain, you know, and, and the weather to be perfect and no winds, you'll never sow seed. You won't sow seed if you're just waiting for perfect conditions. And so today, I, there's so many today that practice faith in the daylight that practice faith, you know, when everything's are all great. They step out and they take a step of faith, but they like that sea of glass. They don't want to step into the waves. In the waves, we just leave it to the preacher. In the waves, we leave it to the church. On a sea of glass, when things are easier, I'll take care of that. I'll, I'll release my faith there, and I'll praise there and pray there and quote scripture there. But all oh, when those storms, and we get overtaken in moments of challenge. I want to talk to you about that. Moments of challenge. I'm telling you, if there's such a thing as bonus points in heaven, I don't think there is, but if there was, God pays careful attention as to how we handle ourselves when we're being squeezed. You know, if you squeeze an orange, Apple juice isn't coming out. You know, if, if you squeeze a cherry, the plum isn't coming out. When we're squeezed, what's in us comes out. I remember back in the old movie, the, actually it was, a, it was a movie of truth with David Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz. And, and Nikki Cruz, I believe if I'm correct on this, was, had a switchblade. I, the name of the book is called The Cross and the Switchblade. And he was threatening a young preacher named David Wilkerson. And David Wilkerson said, well, that knife, you know, and he's, David Wilkerson says, I, I will, if you cut me with that knife, every cut you do with me, I will say, Jesus loves you. In the middle of a challenge of being cut by a switchblade, this prophet of old, David Wilkerson, was saying, every piece of me will cry, Jesus loves you. There's so many stories. As Stephen was in the face of the stoning, and his face was like that of an angel. And he was saying, don't add this to their account. Jesus himself, the Apostle Paul. There's so many people we can name. And I'm talking to you today because right now where you are is a moment of glorious expansion for you. If for no other reason than for you to know, hey, everything I'm doing is really paying off. I am in a different location. My circumstances are far from favorable. And in moments like this, I would have quit in times past. But today I'm reading my Bible. Today I'm quoting actual scripture that pertains to my situation. How do you do that? I mean, Pastor Billy, how, you're asking me to do something very, very difficult. What if you don't feel like doing what you say? What if you don't feel like this? Well, that's when faith comes in. When I don't feel like forgiving because it's so raw and it's so real. I don't want to, you know, we don't want to pretend. We don't want to think that this just didn't happen. That they didn't just say that about me or, or spread that lie or that rumor. And it hurts, but we, we have to say, but do I wait till they earn the forgiveness? Or while I'm raw, while I'm really hurt over this, can I take a step in that storm? What would that step be? Here's what that step looks like. I forgive by faith. I don't forgive because I feel like it. I forgive by faith. That verse right there, Ephesians 4.32, forgiving one another as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Oh, my friend, you're not gonna always feel like forgiving the people that hurt you. No, no, no. But you don't wanna get into them earning it because you and I, you know, we needed forgiveness and we still do. And you expect that forgiveness to come freely. You don't expect it to wait till you get straightened out and smarter. You want forgiven right when it happens because that's when you feel the worst. This, back to this verse, Ephesians 4.32. Forgiving one another as Christ, for God's sake, has forgiven you.
How did he do it? He didn't wait till you got better. He waited. He, he did it the moment you looked northward, the moment you said, help me, Jesus. He didn't say to Peter as he was reaching for him in the sea, well, you're not going to take your eyes off me no more, are you? He didn't even talk about it. He just pulled him up out of the sea. God doesn't correct you until you're strong enough to handle the correction. Taking a step, how about, you, you're saying take a step in the, in the storm. Yeah, I mean, you got to do that with your giving. You know, whenever you're in financial difficulty and you're not making the money that you used to, we want God to understand, well, when I come into my kingdom, I'll give to you, and God says, give out of what you have now. Faith is always now. Well, how do you give out of, I hardly have enough to pay for everything? Give in faith. Forgive in faith, give in faith. But I don't want to praise him. Praise in faith. I want to worship in faith. I don't want to go to church. I don't feel like being around anybody right now. I, I just don't feel like being around people. Well, you know, you can fellowship in faith. See, this step is all about whatever you do. It can be minus the feelings. It can be minus, I don't feel like it. I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? Because the Bible isn't supposed to make sense. It's supposed to make faith. And as faith is produced, it's you taking those steps in great times of difficulty. That's when trust is most needed. That's when all that you've poured into yourself over the years, all of the Bible studies and prayer meetings and prophecies and all of those notes in your Bible, all of that is wonderful. That's all part of moving you forward. But I'll tell you when it really counts is whenever you're in that stormy sea and a step of faith is being required. Jesus was thrilled that Peter wanted to take that step. He knew it wasn't for the purest motive. It wasn't that he wanted to be where Jesus was. He was attracted to the supernatural. He wanted to walk on that stormy sea because it was a new thing to him. Whatever the reason, God was using it to draw P Peter into a deeper place because he knew if he could get Peter to take that step. What step, Billy Burke? That step of faith. And I remind you, into a stormy, stormy condition. Oh, that's when prayer matters the most. That's when praise counts for more because it really recalibrates you. It just brings you into a focus of this here that I'm in, this here that I'm going through. That's when people backslide the most. That's when people quit reading their Bible the most. Wouldn't it be nice if we all had no challenges? We could just sing and praise and read our Bible and forgive everybody because, you know, it was 75 degrees, the sun was shining, and not a storm cloud in sight. Life doesn't work like that. Jesus said it best, in the world you will have tribulation. What's that mean? Storms. What's that mean? Trials. What's that mean? Challenges. And I know you know that. But it's in these very, very times that God is saying, take a step of faith. Read your Bible in faith. Pray, sing the songs that you know. Sing a couple verses or, excuse me, a couple stanzas of the songs that you know. Just sing them out loud. If there's no music around you to help you, just that hospital bed. Yeah, I don't feel like it. I, I get it. I get it. I mean, you don't feel like doing a lot of things. That's why it's called faith. But when you can do it, I mean, when you can really do it, what does Zephaniah say? The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Where's he mighty? In the midst of thee. God wants you to showcase that he's greater in these situations that you're in. He wants the devil to see, look, I'm really possessing my servant. He's really, she's really yielding to my ways. She's doing what you could never do. He wants you to, to show some of the people in your surroundings that really don't practice faith. They give in to, you know, their sadness and the negativity. They go to church, they're good, they love God, they're going to heaven. 
but they're not overcoming here. They need you. They need me, they need you. They need some people around them that say, you know what, yeah, I'm going through this, but wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if someday they find out what you went through and they didn't even know it? Because you didn't smell like smoke. You came out of a furnace with no evidence of where you were. You say, that's getting a little uh, unrealistic. Well, you know, whenever Jesus comes into you and you can keep yielding to him, you're going to become more unrealistic. You become part of a remnant. You, know, you don't become part of the majority. You become part of a remnant. You become one of the, you become one of the 300 in Gideon's army, not one of the 30,000. You become one of the three in the inner circle of Jesus, not one of the 12. You become one of David's mighty men, mighty in the hillside of Palestine, mighty in the caves, mighty when there was little food and drinking water. But they scavenged it, they found it, and God provided and took them to water holes, got them animals that they could cook and eat and, and feed their fearless leader named David. Somehow, they found a way to take a step, to take a step in some of their most difficult times. Don't shut down. That's what I'm saying today. Don't shut down. Take a step of faith, and you're going to find out that as you take that step, yeah, I don't feel like reading the Bible, you know. How many times have you gotten up on Sunday morning and said, I don't feel like going to church, but you did. You pushed through it, and what happened? Oh, my, you were blessed. The sermon, the ministry, the singing, the choir, somebody you met on the way, something happened. And by the time you hit your front door, you know what you said? Well, I'm really glad I went. Why? You went in faith. Circumstances didn't control you. The chain and the ball were broke. God got through. You yielded. You have his undivided attention that the greater one overshadowed the lesser one. I'm telling you, this is the great moment in this earth today for you to no longer be wrapped in grave clothes, hiding in a cave, hiding down in a boat and waiting for the storm to pass. Take a step today in your storm. Read your Bible. Confess some promises. Forgive yourself. Forgive other people. Right in the midst of not feeling like it. And watch what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll do the same thing for you he did for Peter. Peter got on that water and he said, wow. And he walked so far and then he learned, I've got to go to, I've got to go to healing school to learn how to walk longer. My friend, today is your day to take this great step of faith in your storm. Don't wait another second. Father, I pray today you'd touch our viewers, our partners, Give them that unction to take a step against all feeling to get where they've never been in Jesus' name. We're adding a new clip, a new portion onto a segment onto the program, Your Word for Today. Each and every week, we want to show you some of the miracles that's taking place in our crusades. I just feel so blessed that KCM and uh, the Victory Channel have said, you know, Billy, show some of these miracles because they are powerful and we want you to see, not that you don't know, but we just want to remind you gently that the same God that heals these people that you're about to see, he's available for you too. Let's go now and see this miracle that just happened in a service in Miami just a few short weeks ago. Let's go see a man paralyzed begins to walk. Paint the fire. What's going on over here? Why are you in the wheelchair? Uh, okay, let's start from the top. You, uh, I went to the um, hospital for pain. Uh-huh. And they do all kind of tests. Uh-huh. They what? Tests. Test. They, did, they did testing? Yes, and they think I have lung cancer. They think you do or they yes. know you do? So they went in here and here, two hours. When I come out, I was paralyzed from the waist down. <laughs> Yeah, you're doing great. 
praise the Lord. I guess you made a right decision to come here today. Yeah. This is great. This is so great. And let's just pray now for any of you out there that would need a special touch. Those of you that are paralyzed, if God did it for them, he's no respecter of people. Come on, I'm going to believe today that play people that are paralyzed, some feeling, some movement, some twitch, some change is coming to whatever part doesn't work. He's a resurrector. He's a quickening of the Holy Spirit. And I pray right now in Jesus' name that people that have been paralyzed for whatever reason, accidents, surgeries, all over the world, in whatever time zone, I pray a laser light from heaven touch them and quicken their body, quicken bones and muscles, brain cells, quicken. I just pray by the Holy Spirit that you would quicken and give life and movement to where there was none. Where there was minimal, give much. Where there was nothing, give something. That move, moving body parts begin to function. All the extremities of arms and hands and feet and legs and torsos and heads and necks and backs and chest. Oh Lord, it all begin to happen today. We pray for miracles of every kind. And for the cancers and the blind and the deaf. For insomnia, for dementia, for Alzheimer's. God, we pray that you'd begin to come in and change the weather. Let there be a shift even today. It happened so quickly with Frank, and let it happen quickly today, we pray in Jesus' name. I pray that you would take advantage of this offer that we showed you, this cleansing stream, the cleansing of the soul. You know, we talk about today, people want to get a liver cleanse, and they want to get, you know, all of these other things, colonostomies. They want to get all of this internal cleansing in the natural. But the Bible speaks about your soul being cleansed. And that story in Mark chapter 5, when the woman came back and told Jesus all, she emptied her soul. And because of that, she was not just healed, but she was made whole. Get that product today. It will change your life. Till we see you again here in the broadcast next week, your word for today. God bless you. And remember in Mark 10, 27, with God, all things are possible. We'll see you. Bye-bye. We are here on assignment. Come on, we're going to take the city. That revival's coming to Orlando. I had COVID in December. You had COVID? Yes. Uh -huh. And it took about seven to ten days for me to get, to get over it. They're freezing. Yeah. I began to breathe deeper and Tonight. deeper. And I could feel oh, the Holy Spirit. Shout for us.